the main thing that I really learned off of one of my heavy teachers, Joe Morello, who played with Brubeck, and I ended up playing with Brubeck, Carnegie Hall and places like that, and things with the American Ballet. You know, you might think you're jazz, all of a sudden you're playing jazz in a ballet. You know, you just say, oh, I'm going to go play with Dave Brubeck, I'll play jazz, Carnegie Hall, and that kind of stuff. Before you know it, man, he's got you, you know, doing ballet. You know, and you didn't even think you were going to get there. <laughs> you know, I mean, you wasn't even thinking of that one. But, um, you saw it, you liked it, and you did it. You know, and it was an uh, opportunity open. But, um, you, know, you have so many dimensions of, you know, what music could be. And what Joe Morello first taught me is that I am not going to teach you to mimic or be me. But I want you to have the facility to do what you are going after better. You know, you might be going after playing bebop. You know, another guy wants to be funk, and another guy wants to be rap. Another person is thinking classical. Some other guys just say, I just want to play the blues, and another guy says, I don't give a crap, and don't put no doggone label on me. You know, I just want to play what I do. Right? It doesn't matter which one of those it is. You see, if you have facility, you will do it better. You know, if you know how to run that really good, you will do it better. You know, my wife is working at City Hall, and she's got a good job, and it's paying seventeen fifty an hour. You know, for sitting there in that office, and she called, and she's crying for two hours, saying. You know, now I, here I am in City Hall, and they want to elevate me and even give me more money. But, you know, now i got to enter in all of the dumpster stuff of Ann Arbor. You know, and i got to know all of the codes, and i got to learn a whole new program in the computer. And for two hours, I was sitting here baffled. It, and it just brought her to tears right in her own office. You know. You know. <laughs> And she, you know, she calls me, you know, and I'm sitting there with, with my laundry thing, you know, my drum machine set up in my little studio, saying, Doc, God, I got this drum machine for about 10 years, I still don't know how to use it all, <laughs> right? Still don't, you know, but I used it, it, I used it much more than just be, not being, um, just by myself, playing a drum. I did albums with drum machines and, and drums. And I, I made about 10, 12 of those albums. And some people don't even try to go for an album until they got the whole drum machine figured out. You know, and I just look at it, you know, like uh, like the rappers in Oakland when I was living there. You know, they had a little Casio that would sample. Yo, 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 wow, you know, it sampled. It did my voice, you know, and they made hit records. <laughs> you know, because they just added that little uh, uh, Casio sample along with their uh, R8 drum machine then, and that little sample just did a whole thing that made it all come alive, you know, whoa, and it made a hit where some guy's trying to get really finessed. First thing I want to just say, I, I listen to all kinds of drummers and I'm not close to any of them, right, but I li right now I listen to DJs. <laughs> I took it fast. <laughs> all the DJs because every one of them is new because DJing is new, right? And I'm just like, listen, yeah, uh, uh, Techno Rave, you know, uh, uh, with Goa Gill is my friend in uh, California, he started the Goa Trance uh, DJing, okay? So I come out of that bag, that's who I recorded with, he played with me, I played with him, and Herbie Hancock played with us. I did a thing with Goa Gill, Herbie Hancock and myself, and the guy from the Moscow Symphony on violin, and, and you know, you, uh, you find things like that that you like and you end up putting them together. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's a cook. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> we're, just, we're just putting nice <clears throat> meals together. So may the world's greatest soup. Well, producing, you know, just on a producing level, you know, even on a drumming level. On a drumming level to the producing level, we got to know if, if it's cooking. You know, if, if, if the rhythm is contagious, if it's happening. And uh, every uh, generation has their own happening. You, you know, they're they're cooking, they're 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 uh, frying, they're they're jamming. You know, every every generation uh, uh, has they all their own style of jamming. You know, like uh, 
uh, what might be for a folk guy or a funk guy might not be for uh, heavy metal or gothic. You know, so if you're going to produce, you got to know who you're producing. Some of the best producers that I know in California, uh, California to uh, New York to here, um, they first see that there's some a quality about you, right? And then they don't want to uh, make you them, right? They really sort of uh, nurture you to be you a uh, lot better. So Bob is sort of talking about uh, if you want to produce, you got to know about rhythms. Um, so you know, you know if they're cooking rhythms. You know, you might have an artist that's uh, flubbing a little bit, and, and, and the drums are missing, and they're not quite there or something. Uh, you got to be able to detect that. You know, you're not a drummer, but you got to know the difference between a lick and a flub. You know, and also there's certain things that make things happen that are just universal. It's universal. Uh, as universal as one inch is like one bar of music. All you're doing is dividing time like one inch. And then we're going to do, do this. He's a drummer, so he knows this. This is elementary. But if you don't know this now, and, uh, it, this has just got to give you a, a most basic. I have four, uh, five, six-year-old students that are starting to learn this. My seven-year-old students do it, right? So uh, one inch. Um, it's a unit, and so is one bar of music, and so an inch has a half to it and it has quarters to it, right? And it also has eights, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, wait, okay, let's get here. Uh, see, we divide this here into four. Okay, so this is a half, so these are quarters. One and two and three and four and one. One and two and three and four and mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to do this higher so you can see it. <coughs> one, two, three, four. That's our four quarters, and our half to it is one, two, and one, two, and that's the beat. You know, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four. That's the segment. And that would be with quarter notes. And if we divide these in half, we're going to have eight notes. Which is uh, four segments of two. Or, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two. One and two, and, three, and, four, and. One, two, three, four, one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. And the, the reason for that is they have to be exact. You don't have an in, a quarter of an inch that's a little longer than the next quarter of an inch. So you don't have a beat that's longer. You just may have a different beat, but not, not, you're not going to make that quarter note any more than a quarter note. Because there has to be, all, there's only room for four of them. Like there's only room for four quarters in an inch, period. So these divided go like this. Now this has all got to do with the basic thing of a drummer too, see. Now you divide these things into 16 notes. So if you have four beats and you divide and you want 16, each one of the four beats would get how many then? Four. Four, right? So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, E, and a uh, two e and a uh, three e and a uh, four e and a. Uh. 
And why is that? It really tells you where it is. One E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one. So I have every first drum student learn one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one E and a two, three and a four, E and a one. So they can learn how to double time, triple time, uh, in balance. So they're not rushing it when they try to, you know, if they're going here, that's the quarter note. Now, you know, it's got to be. And you get used to playing the ants. You get used to playing the one, the two, the three, the four, the one e and one e and the two, three and four, and one e and the two and the and up or e and up. Now, that's there no matter whether you're a rapper, you're a techno guy, you're a raver, you're a funker, a jazzer, any music style except totally free, then erase it. Now, what you want to have that is that inherent in you. So, I'm half-timing with my feet and double-timing up here. It's right in time. Right? Okay, let's first get quarter notes, and I want everybody just to feel that. One, two, three, count it. Four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four and one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three You see, just as an the importance. Now, do the same thing. Watch. You know, if you were doing a classical, it, it, it's still using the eights, the sixteenths, the quarters. Right? Now, most people inherently think that anyway. They just don't know exactly what that is. But they sort of feel it, because when you walk, one, two, they're already doing that. What makes your style different? What makes your style different from anybody else, believe it or not, is what you hum when you walk. <laughs> you know, one guy's going out, he. Yo, with the, I'm, you know, the man, the guy coming down over here, you know, he's, you know, and the other guys, you know, you know, so he might be thinking some rap, you know, uh, you know, uh, you gotta give up what you got, what you got is a little, you are a lot, gotta let it go if you wanna be free, you know, and he's rambling on to himself, and the other, the other person's going, da -da -da, da -da -da. you know, and some other guy's going, eh, eh, eh. You see, I grabbed it right there, you know, just from my uh, attitude, you know, 
and the other person is doing da 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 your bathroom singing. You know, where you're most vulnerable. Where you won't show nobody anything. That's really you who's wanting to come out. You know, and, and, you, and, and we're all afraid to be vulnerable in front of an audience. We're afraid to let out our, yeah, you know, whatever it is, you know, you're, they think you're crazy. Music is the place where we can do this. Uh, I'm done. Pull yourself together.